Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be playing some Quinn the top lane and showing you how to carry on her. She's definitely a boldy laner, just like how Draven is a boldy in the bot lane. The main thing you need to know about Quinn is she has some horrible matchups you just can't play her into. Things like Poppy, she can cancel your dash. Poppy also has the ranged auto attack and corruption abuse. Playing against Kel is challenging because she outscales you and can play safe. Then there's other very challenging champions like Yasuo, Akshan, and Vlad. However, against slow and mobile melee champions, Volibear, Cho'Gath, Singe, Sejuani, Warwick Top, you absolutely slaughter them with over 60% win rate against each matchup. Mainly because of her E, it's a dash, it also gets you an auto attack range and knocks them. Very, very strong. But against ranged matchups, it's a little bit more tricky. So we'll try to, <laughs> we'll try to make this work. We'll see. So once that's on a cooldown, I think we can take a good trade against him. So maybe looking for an auto E auto because he wasted his main ability it missed. So he, I think he needed to play back a little bit. He goes in for the auto Q. His ability's on cooldown again. I'm trading it on his back line here, which isn't great. Three ranged minions is basically an 80 carry auto attack. We want to try to abuse our fleet every time it's up. Hit something with it. We're going to hit level two first here, I think. Because we have... Uh, yeah, get level two first. Go ahead and get our Q next. Q is better against ranged champions since it has some actual range compared to your E. We can throw it out and not have to put ourselves in harm's way. You do need to be able to kite a little bit to play Quinn well, at least in the late game. Early on, kiting is pretty easy because you don't have high attack speed. So it's clear he's starting to disengage, to become a lot more passive. So what we want to do is just shove the wave in and try to kill their jungler. Most junglers will be doing their last camp around 315 to 330. And that's what we want to try to punish. Auto attack Q. We get that AoE off. We could try to float in single autos on him. But like I said, this guy's playing really, really safe. So instead, I'd rather try to punish their Maokai. If you want to max your W first, Q second, and E last. We'll use our refill here. So yeah, he's not over here yet. I'm a little surprised. He's either AFK or he did a weird route. Maybe tried to gank something and didn't pan out. We haven't missed a minion yet since we crashed the wave and we're still in XP to get this one. All right, we see him now. Hit him with a Q auto. I do want to go kill this Maokai. I think he's very killable. I'm so annoyed he got there late though because that Maokai full clear is actually way faster than what this guy just ran. He must, oh yeah, he's dead. Auto E, auto, gone with the ignite. He's literally dead. Thanks, Maokai, appreciate you, buddy. Good job from the Mimu. Auto Q, auto, couldn't quite tag it. I'll flash for that, down he goes, that's a double. Your W gives you some vision for a couple of seconds on the active. More importantly, the passive makes it to whenever you land your passive. Um, it's extra attack speed and movement speed. That's why you max it first. The wave's in a bit of a freeze and I have red buff, so I don't have to back, even though I am sitting on a lot of gold. Now, if Moo wanted to stay and push, I'd be down to stay and just push, reset, spend gold. But if he's not going to help me push, I can't really push this fast enough. Auto attack into the Q, get a bit of damage on Ken there from the AoE. Also, I sniped a minion that was dying. This is too many minions. We juked him out there, get a red buff auto on him. Try to fish another auto, we were able to find it. Auto attack Q, we get him with the AoE on the Q there. I have plenty of mana right now, so I'm down to use my abilities a little bit more liberally. I'm also trying to thin out this wave before it full crashes on my turret. Auto E, auto, auto Q. Now that was a really sketchy. <laughs> that was really, really, really sketchy. I should build the heal back faster than him. He doesn't have potions and I do have red buffs as long as he's not able to really hit me. I say he doesn't have potions, but he's healing back with the D-Blade, I suppose, a little bit. I don't mind pushing this as long as I'm six. Even if he tries to freeze, I can come back to the wave really fast. Don't know why he just used that ability. It's kind of weird. I'm, like, I'm going to look for my reset. Sitting on a lot of gold. Their team is outrageously magic damage heavy. Every single da every single champion on their team except for Kaisa does all magic damage. And even then, Kaisa's got a bit of it in her kit. So early on, I could see myself wanting a wit's end. 
It's kind of a weird item to rush, not gonna lie, but uh, I think we'll get decent value out of it because they're top and mid are AP, mid's AP, bot's AP. Normally though, in most matchups, you're gonna rush Bork. It's super safe against tank top laners, melee tanks. Kraken's a bit of a neutral purchase. You can pick it against anything, but it leaves you squishy. Wit's end's gonna make us a little tanky. Okay, he's dead. We're gonna walk up, hit him with an auto, auto E. I think I have boots advantage here, so I can run down. I'll attack Q reset, down he goes. Very nice. You don't want to spam your abilities all at once on them because every time you land an ability, your next auto attack against that target will apply your passive. So there's really no incentive to crank out your abilities like that. You should do them ability, auto, ability, auto, ability, auto. That way you can maximize the time spent with extra movement speed and attack speed from your W. I'm not seeing Ari mid lane, otherwise I'd be roaming right now. Not sure where she's at. We'll go ahead and chug double refill here. We need to get our health back. Could have actually reset. So that's the one thing about Quinn. You don't need TP on her since she has so much mobility from her R. TP on her is kind of uh, pointless. His Q's on cooldown here. Ooh, yep. missed that minion. The closer you stand, the easier it is to last hit. Your autos will get there faster. So we're having trouble last hitting. Try to stand closer if you can do so safely. You need to pay attention to what your backline's hitting. That's how you last hit much easier. Your backline dictates what's gonna die first. Since they do most of the damage and you can see their auto's traveling over space to a specific target. They're all focusing the front one, Can's focusing left and now they're all gonna focus middle because he's the only one left. Gonna max our Q second, E last. E per level doesn't get enough stats. We can float in single autos here, or just pressure his turret while staring at the mini map. He's tanking all my minions now. Auto Q auto. He did take tank a lot of minions for that, and he also missed a lot of minions. I think he should have just uh, weathered the storm there. Not necessarily look for a big trade. I'm down to actually back. I'm sitting on a stupid amount of gold. Another option you have on Quinn is to go for auto E. One second. Oh, Ari's here. All right. I think I actually win that solo fight pretty comfortably. Kennen was on full cooldowns and I only needed two more auto attacks. Good roam from the Ari. I can get full wit's end now. Wit's end is a little bit cheaper than your standard first item rush on Quinn, which is once again going to be Bork, Kraken, or Shield Bow. Eclipse isn't bad, but man, Shield Bow and Kraken are better. Looks like they might even be lane swapping here. It's kind of interesting. I'll head back to top lane real quick. The wit's end gives us a lot of extra movement speed after attacking. We get 20 movement speed per two seconds. Gonna help with walking them down in conjunction with our W movement speed. Looks like the wave's crashing. I gotta get over here ASAP. Kennen is playing mid now. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I guess he's not enjoying this matchup. I don't think this is necessarily Quinn favored. I think it's just more of how we played the early game and how he played it. He was too aggressive early on, starting with Q. He put it on a cooldown and then not run away, and then we could take really good trades with Fleet. Press the attack is also a solid option. Did he TP over here? Did he actually walk that far? Step up for a few autos. Auto attack Q, auto, auto. Oh, I missed the minion, though. That kind of sucks. Ah, uh, he put a single auto attack on me there. How sweet. My autos are chunky. My autos are doing about 100 damage per hit. That's even without passive as well. Fleet, like the health it gives you is nice, but I think it's really more for the movement speed than anything else. Being able to pinch off one or two more autos is going to be doing more damage than press the attack typically. I think there's something going on over here I got to get to. Go into bird mode, get our free passive. Going off here on the R here in a second. I'll go in. Oof, I wanted to go in straight with the E. Couldn't quite find it. Help them with the Herald instead. You don't want to be dying on Quinn. Kind of like an AD Evelyn. As long as you're alive, you're 
the amount of pressure you put on the map, them scared about a Quin Roam is super, super high. Let's float some autos in on this guy. Hit him with a Q auto. Found it, nice. Can get all my health back as well. The kite ability with Wits End Rush is actually kind of interesting. I'm moving as fast as I would with tier two boots just by having these. And it was 200 gold cheaper than an item you'd normally go for on her. He has no R. He can't step up for anything too crazy. He's looking to hit me with his Q. I'm not going to let him do that for free, though. Auto E auto. Got to back out of that one. Try to get back some health before his R's back up. Got him with the Q, auto E, auto ignite. Down he goes. Kind of scary go going in on someone who has electrocute when I'm missing that much HP. Whew, man. R is dead. We should be able to take this. Keep a close eye on the minimap every time I auto. I'm looking at the minimap roughly two times per second. I can also, like right now, I'm not even looking on my screen. I'm just looking on the minimap. I don't have to actually look at my point of view to attack move click. It's just going to attack what's ever closest to my cursor there. That way if Maokai pops up, I have the maximum chances of escaping. Make sure this isn't warded. It's time to reset. Keep a close eye on what's going on over here. Then we'll back. You can go for Merc Treads. It's generally best to look for Berserks. And now I'll play for Shield Bow. If you're ahead, Shield Bow is typically the way to go so you don't die and throw shutdown gold. If you have a massive, massive front line, then you can play for Kraken Slayer for maximum shred. Their front line's bigger though with Maokai Cannon, I think, plus Seraphine R versus just R and Mumu. So I'd rather have Shield Bow for survivability here since it can be hard to survive in these type of fights. Got it. Nice, nice, nice. Get another point in our R. I'm not seeing the cannon here. He might have gotten sad after that last. Okay, no, he's just roaming. He's going to give up turret. My teammates have decent vision on the map, so I don't think he's going to find much there. I'll let the turret kill everything. I don't actually have to finish it. To make sure I'm in relative range. That way we get the first turret gold and whatnot in the plate. If you're too far away, you don't get the local gold. I don't think you even get credit for the plate if you don't hit it either, or if you're not super close to it, one or the other. Ooh, that's not good. I'm dead. I had nowhere to go. She had more R's to run me down. I'm not going to be able to get out of that situation. Took too many turret shots. 900 damage from turret. That's kind of absurd. The surprise they went for that. They just gave up mid turret. Interesting. That's one thing about Quinn. Her escape potential against ranged champions is, isn't that high. In the RER especially, man. So no way I'm getting away from that. After Shield Bow, we'll be looking for Bork, and then we'll start building out our crits. So it'll be Shield Bow, Bork, probably LDR, Lord Dharma's Regard, into Infinity Edge. I have lots, lots of damage, lots of survivability through Wits End and Shield Bow. Auto E Auto, Q Auto. I can't really run him down because I got stunned. He's going to lose turret though. He's also fast because he's cannon. His E. I actually didn't back. It's a little surprising. He's gonna die if he doesn't. Auto Q auto. Down you go, buddy. Guess he didn't realize how low his turret was. He needed to full reset and give up wave. Wait, when did I die a second time? I remember dying to the Ari gank. I don't think I ever solo died to Kennen though. Did I? There's no way, right? 
Not sure now. She's trying to land her charm on me. I'm not going to give it to her. These ranged mages are trying to entice me into coming on them, but I'm not going to. I'll keep pushing them out. They run back when I run towards them, and then once they're close enough to their turret, then they, they're they willing to fight me. And they can draw me into turret, turret range, essentially. Oracles is definitely the way to go once you're level 6 and up. You can clear out so much vision with your R because you're moving so fast. You can figure out exactly where the wards are. I can't really get there in time. We'll go ahead and push this. Quinn isn't a bad split pusher per se. She can definitely handle any tank solo, especially if you have percent base damage on Lord Dong's Guard or Bork. But you can't really deal with a Jack solo or a Nasus. I think you could deal with the Shen though. I think that's a lot more manageable. Shen dash is on a much longer cooldown than Jack's dash. Jack's can also get more done with his auto block, I think. Uh, they they kind of want me here, I guess. I'm gonna flash that. Don't feel like getting picked. Oh, I'm dead. Possibly. Auto E, auto. Ooh. I was trying to go over the wall. I didn't have quite enough distance, though. We'll go ahead and pop back into R, use a refill. See if we can find something. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't want to die. Get HP back real quick. I have a decent amount of life still from runes plus uh, vampiric. Yeah, chasing mages is ridiculous. This is honestly such a bad comp to play Quinn against. The only reason why it's working is like I said, level one, we built an advantage. And on top of that, uh, like I have a lot more CS with how I played the lane. A whole lot more CS. We're at 160 right now per 18 minute. For having two dads, not bad. Actually pretty solid. Your R isn't cheap. 50 mana, it's all the way down to zero. When did they do that? I thought it was 100 out all ranks. It's actually decently cheap now that we have two points in it. It's down to zero. That's very abnormal. Somewhat of a forced buff, I would say, because with pretty much every champion in League of Legends, when you level up an ability, it makes it cost more mana, not less. So the fact that Quinn's R becomes cheaper per level is super strange. I guess she doesn't have very good mana item options in good mana item options. R is bot side. Let's see how much vision we can get here. Kennen's ease on cooldown. I'm looking at his items. I think we win this. Auto W. Got vision of him. Gonna hit him with ignite. Auto E auto. Oh cool. I canceled my auto attack. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been a kill. I don't know what happened to my auto there. Must have canceled it or something. He might have been moving fast enough to cancel it, but I don't know. Now we got shield bow. It's time for LDR or Bork. They don't have that much armor, so I'm thinking Bork for now. More attack speed and whatnot. We gotta be careful not building any more attack speed though. If we do, we're gonna be attack speed overfilling really, really hard. Because W gives an extra 60% attack speed. Quite high. Quid's passive scale is crazy high with AD. 142% AD scaling. So my full crit builds are uh, so impactful. Check with W. Couldn't find her. She must have based. What makes Quinn's wave clear so good is her W attack speed. Since it doesn't cost mana, it's just your passive going off, and then you can stride the wave down 60% additional attack speed. They're all kind of grouping mid. I'll sit on the split push here. I don't see a good team fight right now. Ash isn't even over there, so why would I go over there and fight 4v5? Seems kind of pointless. I'd much rather sit here and do this. Now, if my team's willing to group, when the enemies are five-man stacked, then I'll head over there, but until then... This is our best move. Like, what, if we go here, we legit die. We might get one kill and then we die. 
So as nasty as it is to let our teammates get murdered there, it was kind of Ash's fault or Ash's positioning dictates we can't team fight essentially. So our teammates posting up there isn't good and Ash split pushing isn't good because if someone comes for her, she'll die. She won't be able to escape. They're not on dragon. I'll head straight over there. Be nice if my W is up so I could check this area without getting myself killed. See Ari's bot side. I feel a little bit safer now to push this. R is one of the few of them that can get to me consistently with her triple dash on her R. Got to keep soaking resources on Quinn. Always be consuming minions or getting ganks or roams, killing the enemy jungler or whatever it is. Always be absorbing gold. Her biggest, her biggest uh, leg up she has is her just generalized mobility. You can run wave to wave to wave to wave. Looking at Kenan's items, he's one full item versus our shield bow. He can't fight auto queue up. Ooh, she flashed. I'll be taking this. That sucks. We would have had her. I think she flashed though, like I said. I need it. Oh, flash for this. They're really gonna flash like that. Nice. Down you go, buddy. I'm with my minions now. She actually doesn't win this. If, so the way Kaisa's missiles work is if you're by yourself when she shoots out her missiles, which isn't even a skill shot, her little ones, then you take insane damage. I'll use W, hit her with Q. Oh my gosh, she's so lucky, man. She's so dead there because I got all my health back from healing off the minions and then I was going to fight her because she's two items anyways and I have magic resist. So I wanted to get a little bit of health back there first. We stopped to auto the minion on our way out to get our passive. That way our W would give us 40% bonus movement speed. But so by stopping to take in a passive auto attack, it actually got us farther away from Kaisa. And then we were able to kill the Kennen and not die. Gotta run away from this. Don't wanna die to Ari. And then I'll go for these camps. So it's it's a interesting play style. It's kind of a cross between Trindamir, taking the enemy jungler camps, killing the enemy jungler. Of course, don't don't be missing CS to do it. And uh, at the same time, you're a heavy roamer as well. Kind of like a Malphite with his R. We get the speed up. He gets his speed up. Auto Q auto. My Q hit this minion, so I wasn't going to be able to stay on top of him. Kennen's a slippery champion. He also has fast boots because he took the free ones in his runes. He actually dies here if he steps up. I don't. Oh man, that was almost a free kill. Oh well. It is what it is. Doesn't seem to be anybody over here. I'll go for scuttle real quick. Look for a reset. I don't want to die. Got to keep the pressure on. Keep stacking up the gold leads. Quinn in the true late game isn't bad. You do have to position Crisp on her though, because she is a squishy, fragile champion. To where if they're holding you still, you'll lose all of your mobility. Your mobility comes from auto attacking, applying passives. I'm two and a half items, so we can take this decently quick. Since the Mumu's tanking, whoever's tanking Baron does 50% less damage. So we can't solo this, even though we have a lot of self healing because doing half damage kind of sucks. Something I haven't really done this game is to go over walls backwards with E because we've never had that opportunity. It's more common when you play Quinn jungle rather than Quinn top. Quinn top's way more consistent than Quinn jungle though. Let's go for, yeah, I'd say LDR or tanky. We're pretty tanky. Mages don't do that much against us because we have Wits End, lots of magic resist, plus Shield Bow for general tankiness against all of them. And then, of course, we have lots of damage. 329 AD. Moving 829 across the map. 700 without Scuttle speed up. Seems like they're bot side-ish right now. If I can pull two top, that's huge for our team. Use W, I wasn't sure if they're trying to flank me real quick. Yeah, but like I said, if I pull two top, that means my teammates are fighting way less people. And then all we have to do is stay alive and we can still absorb a disproportionate 
disproportionate amount of resources here. It's about staying alive. I mean, you may say, well, why not team fight right now? I'm already over here, first of all. And secondly, I'm faster than everyone in the game, at least in terms of long periods or stretched out periods of time to where we can macro the map and we don't even have to risk team fighting. Because if they hit us with a single hard CC and then they chain it, I'm going to die. Versus if they send anyone to kill me, I can kill them. And if they send two people, I might be able to kill them both. And keep in mind the whole time we're also taking their camps as well. So we're getting farther and farther and farther and farther and farther ahead. Now that doesn't mean there's times you shouldn't group. For example, Draxel, obviously we're going to group. Or if the enemy team's trying to do Baron, then we could justify grouping if we can't counter take their inhibitor or something along those lines. But um, yeah, just grouping for the sake of grouping to group for the sake of grouping isn't that good on champs like Quinn or Trindomir or Fiora. There needs to be a very, very good reason behind it. Now we get Drag Soul. At that point, we could honestly group, probably win the team fight comfortably. But then again, it's like, why should we? If Kennen tries to match me in a split, we can easily solo him. It just goes along with anyone else on their team. And then we don't ever risk getting chain CC'd with Maokai R, Maokai Q, Kennen R, Kennen stun after that, Seraphine R. Oh, I see he's out of position now. We have the mobility to run it. We'll hit him with an auto E auto or auto auto E. When we can no longer reach him with autos, we'll use E. Auto E auto. Down he goes. And they get absolutely shredded. Kennen didn't even pop my shield bow, which is an extra fat shield. What is it at? Yeah, 630 shield. Couldn't quite get it there. Get all of our health back from shield bow and our runes there. Throw out a Q. Got the R. I have double supers here. I don't know what R I think she's going to do. She's trying to find it. I don't not gonna let her have it though. If she lands charm, I'll actually die there. Let's get her health back. Gotta clear these minions out. Get my supers on. Oh that Moomar wasn't bad, but it's kinda deep. It's hard for me to follow that up. I'm in trouble. Whew, that was messy. Get hit by the uh, Seraphine R. And that's GG's, guys. Some Quinn in the top lane. Macro ga gameplay. Let's look at damage dealt, damage taken, and runes. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we still had a decent amount considering we weren't always interacting with enemy champions. Looking at damage taken, pretty decent, and for runes, solid value. If you guys enjoyed this Quinn video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.